Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar about five facility management tech tips to survive the coming decade. I'm Ann Cosgrove, the Editor-in-Chief of Facility Executive Magazine, and this webinar is presented by ARC Facilities. Before we get started, I would like to cover a few housekeeping items with you. Please note the control panel on your screen. This is where you can submit questions in the question box in that panel. You can send your questions in for the speaker at any time, and they will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Please note the orange arrow on the left side of that control panel. Clicking on that arrow will either expand or collapse the panel, so please be sure it is expanded so you can access the question box in there. Also, if at any time you experience a technical difficulty, you can send a message to us in that section and someone will answer you privately. If you are interested in continuing education credits, please note you'll receive a certificate of attendance in an email from Facility Executive after this event, and you can report that to your association for continuing education credits. Now I would like to introduce your speaker. Uh, your speaker today is David Trask, and David is the National Director for ARC Facilities. He's a well-known presenter at NFMT, ASHI, AIM, Realcom, and numerous other live events and webcasts across North, North America, with a focus on helping organizations better manage their building information. David shares trends, strategies, and best practices for managing facilities within healthcare, universities, government, and commercial applications where teams manage multiple buildings and campuses. He's also on the education committee for IFMA.org. So without further ado, I'll welcome David. And as I said, we'll have Q&A at the end, so please do send in your questions as they arise. Uh, thank you. Welcome, David. Thank you, Anne, and uh, welcome, everyone. So what we're going to talk about today is the digital transformation and how that's accelerating the built environment. So what that means is essentially, think about all of the technologies that you've implemented in your buildings in recent and in, in near term here, and then think about where you're gonna be down the road. So what we're gonna really do is dive in and we're gonna discuss a few tips that can help you moving forward. So let's get started. So here's a few stats that I wanted to share. So how quickly it's changing. So 59% of execs are introducing employees to mobile apps to navigate work environments. So think about the different systems that you use internally right now, whether it's your payroll system, or maybe it's even an, uh, an HR system that you use for, for managing PTO of, client, of your, uh, your staff. You're using all these types of tools right now, whether it's on a desktop or mobile. But here's another stat. 25 billion will be spent on building connectivity and controls by 2025. That's a huge number. Well, what, that's, what that means essentially is as technology changes, our industry is changing too. So the spend on technology is increasing as well. But also 79% show the growth rate for IoT, sensor technology and corporate real estate. Are you adding IoT and components of IoT into your long-term goals as well? So think about your 10-year plan, your 20-year plan. Where does IoT fit into that as well? So what is a digital transformation and what does that mean to you? Well, what that essentially means is a digital transformation, as you can see here, is a use of new, fast, and frequently changing digital technology to solve problems. Technology is not a scary thing. Technology is coming so fast, so far along, but it's meant to help you. It's really meant to help your team with best practices, efficiency, get more stuff done. So any things that you can do as far as technology to implement, you need to take a really hard look at that and figure if that is helping my team be more successful. Because let's, let's face it, in facilities, we're all in customer service. Think about that, you're in customer service. So the folks that come through that door, whether they're visitors, whether they are employees, whether they're vendors, whatever, they're customers. So it's your job to really figure out the best way to maintain that building, and technology is a huge part of that moving forward. So how do you avoid getting left behind? Well, let's, let's kind of take a look at that. So leverage technology. Technology, again, is not this scary thing. Technology is your friend. Technology is, is speeds up your processes, but it also helps you 
to really define current conditions of your building, to be able to be proactive versus reactive when it comes to things that go wrong in your building. But it also helps you with things like preventative maintenance. It's alerts. It's all those different things that really help you better effectively manage your buildings. So let's talk about these tips. So tip number one here, and we've got five, get digital now. What that means is think about where is all my stuff today? You've got filing cabinets, you've got a basement full of drawings, you've got you know, rolls of drawings sitting on my desk, I've got piles of closeouts, I've got all this different stuff all over the place. And a big part of that is I'm still asking for that when I do my closeout package on my project. So I still get two full size sets, three half size sets, and a bunch of binders, but I do get a CD too, or I get a thumb drive. Well, why are you asking that kind of, uh, asking for that kind of a deliverable? You're just adding to the pile. Every time you're asking for paper, you're asking for you to have some stuff that is not easily accessible. It's all in paper. Well, let's take a look at a few things that what that means to you is, your stuff has to be shareable. So think about the image on the left here. How easy is it for you to grab paper or even find the paper to share that out with somebody? It's, it's not convenient. It's typically all over the place. Even though you may have it organized even to this degree where you can see the little cubbies here with all the different drawing sets in it, that doesn't mean that the most recent one has already been filed in there. It's probably sitting on your desk or behind your desk or maybe it's on John's desk or Betty's desk it's managing all of that information and then being able to share it is, is tough. Well, in the digital world though, everybody's got a phone. Everybody has a phone. Think about how far we've come in the last 20, 25 years. Everybody has a smartphone in their pocket today, all of them. So how we share information has evolved tremendously. My wife was texting me this morning, and then she sent me a picture of our daughter's grades. Uh, think about that. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have had to wait until I got home or, or tried to figure out where, you know, how could she share that information with me without just vocally telling me what it was. She just sent me a picture of it. We're all using technology. I just shared something right there this morning that I don't necessarily think I five years ago. Well, that's how fast technology has evolved. We're sharing stuff every day. But also it has to be searchable. So again, think about how many times you go down into your plan room or how many times you go to that filing cabinet or how many times you're, you're digging trying to find all of that paper-based information. You're trying to find that stuff and then you're that guy in the middle photo here. He's on a roof. He goes up to a piece of machinery and he's trying to find out how to fix that thing or he goes to another area of the building that's not anywhere near your plan room. So right here, he has to climb off that roof, go down the ladder, go down, you know, go through the crawl space, go down, go down to the basement, try and find all of that information to fix that thing, okay? If he needs to find the O&M on it, it's not on his phone right now, why not? But the goal again through search here is everybody, should have access to that. So search and access is possible in modern cloud solutions. You can do this stuff. It's not, it's not brand new here. This stuff is available today. Well, also your information has to be protected. So think about that. You've got a plan room here on the left. So whether your information is stored in a, a basement or it's in a closet or whatever, it's susceptible to fire, water. Uh, we actually working with a client. We went into their plan room, and there was actually a dead possum that had petrified down in their plan room. Tells you how long they've, how long it's been since anybody's been in that room. But but at the end of the day, this stuff is a mess, and it's tough. It's really tough, and it's not protected. I was with another client where a sprinkler had actually popped in the room right next to their plan room while we were there. I mean, it, it, stuff happened, but if that would have happened in their plan room, they would have lost everything. It's, it's tough, but also things can be lost and damaged 
when you give something to your contractor or you you make a copy of it and or you give your original to your electrician 20 years ago or 15 years ago and they never brought it back or it's shredded or or uh, you know it's got coffee stains on it but what's worse is the older documents that you've got are what's on the right blueprints vellums they're shredded I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen documents where the title blocks have gone and that building we know has changed names three times well it, it's tough but protected means all your information should be backed up redundantly and that's part of the cloud it's not a scary place it helps protect you well tip number two is learn the language of tech so you've seen some of these i'm sure cloud android uh SaaS, 5g what this is the base some of the basic vocabulary that will help you when you're trying to introduce technology especially when you're selling it upstream to to peers and in, in you're within your group or your senior leadership or even it these are some things that you just want to kind of keep your head around and so you're talking you're, you're, you're talking their language that'll help them to understand hey this person's done their research here they're really trying to understand how this can help them and and really dive in but know the availability of technologies and how they work together so this image i love this because you can see you've got a phone a laptop servers databases desktops tablets but they're all cloud computing here you can all access all the same information from all these different devices but in one spot i love the term single source of truth everything's in one spot everybody's looking at the same stuff and that's speaking the language of IT professionals. They hate the fact that they've got multiple spots where stuff's all over the place. If you can centralize all that information and work with technologies that communicate with each other, that's a win all around. Well, understand how technology is evolving and how to prepare for the future. You know, I use the, the one example, you know, and now I can use this over and over and over again, but at the end of the day, technology is changing every day. Think about your, your smartphones. They, you know, they, they didn't used to have a huge hard drive on them. They, they didn't have the ability to have all the apps, you know, and, and you ran out of storage all the time because you took too many photos. No, now I've got almost a terabyte hard drive on my cell phone and I, everything's backed up to the cloud anyway, automatically. That's how fast technology is changing and evolving. Well, imagine where it's going to be 5, 10, 20 years from now. You want to think ahead as how can I use some stuff and how can I identify technologies that will really help me moving forward? It's a big deal. So there's also a lot of learning options. Webinars, like today. These are, these are great ways for you to hear little, little key takeaways. My goal is that if you get one or two little items that you can take away, that's a win. That's great. Again, you've also got trade organizations here that will really help you. A lot of them have uh, libraries of data. They have webinars that are canned. I know uh, Facilities Executive, they have a ton of different webinars that are canned that, uh, that are recorded that you can actually access. Uh, utilize those types of resources. Also, use peer groups within LinkedIn Learning and LinkedIn groups within LinkedIn to really leverage your peers in the industry. Uh, local colleges and have also some online courses that you can use for your, your continuing education credits. Uh, online tech di dictionaries here, you've got Webopedia, uh, YouTube, you know, how many times do you use YouTube to try and find something? I use it all the time too. But also IT education sites like Techopedia. You've got a ton of different resources. This is just a handful here. But think about all the different resources that you've got at your fingertips that you can access and really grab information to help you moving forward as an organization. That's the goal here. So tip number three is adopt a mobile first mindset. I, I teach a lot of sessions at conferences as Ann had mentioned around the country and one of the first things I ask folks is raise your hand if you've got a smartphone. Of course, everybody raises their hand. And then I'll say, keep your hand in the air if you can access all of your building related information, so your blueprints, your ONM manuals, all your equipment locations, 
all your emergency information, and virtually everybody puts their hand down. And my next question to them is, why the hell not? Pardon me there, but that's, that's just the way it is. Why not? Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody's using technology every day. Why aren't you able to access all of your building information on your phone or any mobile device for that matter? That's, that's the mindset. Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody. So use it. It's a tool. It's just like a wrench. Use it. Well, what that mobile first mentality means is faster results. So you eliminate downtime searching for floor plans and, and uh, electrical drawings and all that information. But there's all this other stuff you can find too. Think about your O&Ms, think about your warranties, all of that stuff. If you have a mobile first mentality, you're gonna be able to find that stuff. So that guy on that roof photo that I showed a little while ago doesn't have to climb off that roof. He pulls his phone out of his pocket, he can access all of that. It's possible. Also, keep your teams working efficiently. Think about how many more work orders you can get done because the guys and gals aren't running back and forth from the plan room or, or waiting for a response because they don't have the documentation to, to do their job. That it's just a waste of time. But it also provides you, uh, it optimizes for ease of use and speed. Speed. Okay, you're, you're, again, proactive, fast, proactive decisions versus reactive decisions that could go sideways. We've all had those. So it also lowers the risk. So providing your real-time access to the information can help take a, prevent a little thing, like a little water leak in a pipe, to turning into a big thing. Do you know where those shutoffs are? Do you know where the drawings are for, for something? I, I actually just met with a client yesterday and they could, she couldn't find any of her drawings for her sewer. She couldn't find them. I said, why not? And then anyway, we, we have to track that stuff down. But at the end of the day, that's what we're talking about. You can, she had a sewer back up and it was 45 minutes. We all, I mean, you've seen that before. It's, it's a mess. Well, imagine if she could have pulled that stuff up in just a couple of seconds and address that issue. The, it's no longer a mess, now it's a mop. Also, synced data ensures everyone is using the latest information. That's the goal. You don't wanna have John looking at some stuff on their phone and, and Betty's over there looking at something else and it doesn't match up. Everybody should be looking at the same stuff. Why would you have people on a different page? But also when an emergency happens, it helps minimize damage. So whether it's a, uh, you know, you've got a pipe burst or you've got a, good, good, good God, you've got an active shooter or some scenario has gone sideways in your building, mobile first, like I said earlier, everybody has a smartphone in their pocket, everyone. If they can't access all of your emergency information, that's a problem. That can go sideways quick. Tip number four. Embrace partnerships between IT and facilities. IT is not scary. Okay, you get, a lot of folks are like, oh gosh, I don't want to deal with my IT folks. No, IT should be your best friend. You guys both have some similar goals, and it's to make sure that, that the building is operating you know, the way it's supposed to be, main, making sure that people can access information the way it's supposed to be. There's some common, common themes here. But they're not your enemy, they're your friend. So let's take a look at this right here. So again, facilities has their own, and these, these uh, circles are coming toward each other, but at the end of the day, in the middle there is the, is the same goal here, the betterment of the building. If you increase collaboration between IT facilities and other groups, of course, it's a shared priority because everybody's trying to make the space, the building better operating functionally, uh, functioning the way it's supposed to be, to again, provide better customer service, better experiences for those people who are in the building and who are visiting the building. But then you've also got other folks here that are redefining relationships here, or these, this is kind of the redefining of relationships, I should say. So you've got facilities here in the bottom left, they're managing equipment, some of the communication and sensors and all the different stuff and projects that are going on in the building, okay? Again, going toward the building here. 
Then you've got occupants who are also using phones and tablets and computers within the building, but they also have chairs, desks, and everything else within their space. IT is managing networks, security, connectivity, but again, it's all for the betterment of the building. You're all working together for the betterment of the building and to make the user experience within the building better. So everybody is working together, and again, it's for the better, uh, better experience within the structure itself. So IT and facilities partnerships, uh, again, is happy building occupants, improves safety and security, accommodates dynamic workplaces. Uh, think about your workplaces that you have in, in your different buildings. Are they open floor plans? Are they more of a, uh, uh, everybody's got an office? Again, you wanna accommodate the way those different buildings are, are managed so that everybody's on the same page and everybody's uh, fluid with being able to respond to things that come up. Connectivity providing better control. Everybody needs to have access to the stuff when the heck they need it. Faster implementation of projects, of initiatives within the organization. But an orchestrated solutions. Orchestrated solutions means everybody's working together for the, for the, the goal of the building, the goal of the organization, and that's to increase revenue, be less downtime, all the different things associated with the building, everybody's working together and uh, to, to really hit the company's goals. Tip number five, think differently. You have to think differently. The old ways are not the new ways. And I can't stress that enough. The old ways, this is the way we've always done it, doesn't fly anymore. You have to think differently because the folks who are coming up through the, through the uh, facilities world all have smartphones, they're all tech savvy. So when you think about when you have new folks that are hired and now you're telling them to go dig through piles and piles of paper when they've got a phone in their pocket that they're fluid with. Not everybody is necessarily, but it's not, it shouldn't be rocket science either. Think differently. Well, mastering change keeps you valuable. So it helps you be agile. Le leverage the technology to solve old problems in new ways. Cannot stress that enough. Technology helps you leverage old problems in new ways. So the days of having to have a paper archive, you need to, you need to get outside of that. You need to get digital, move forward. Think about how much faster you can get, get stuff done and be able to respond intelligently and also be proactive even in preventative maintenance. Run sprints. This I love this one. Focus on small, uh, iterative uh, improvements when possible. Think about little changes to big changes. Scale those. Figure out how you can implement things and uh, the iterative. I'm sorry, iterative improvements. Think about little things that you can do today to move forward. But then think about your long-term goals too. Set those priorities and do them. You're going to look great to your boss. When you're coming to the table showing them that, that you've got something that you could sh honestly show them that this is going to improve efficiency. That's what everybody, that's the buzzword everybody loves to hear. This is going to help me get more done. But also open source. Adopt best practices from within and outside. So think about what your peers are doing. Ask questions. Think about those user groups. Think about those trade organizations you belong to. Ask questions, what are you doing? Go to trade the shows. I do a ton of different trade shows a year and I'm always asking the questions, what are you guys doing? What's working, what's not working? Ask the questions and then figure out what they're doing and figure out if it's something that you can implement at your facility. Again, it's, it's not rocket science, but you also don't need to reinvent the wheel. Figure out what your peers are doing and, and mirror it. So what has history taught us? Well, industries have changed. So look at the images here. The three on the left here, so you know, cameras with film. I remember it was crazy how fast it went from film to everybody had a digital camera to everybody never, they got rid of their digital cameras and now everybody uses their phone. My phone takes better pictures than any 35 millimeter camera I've ever had. And it's instant. I don't have to go and, and turn in that film and wait for it to be developed, the old days. 
Well, Blockbuster, holy cow, they went out of business like overnight. You've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got all these other other streaming services that are available. I, I just flew uh, flew out uh, last night and I was watching movies on my phone. 20 years ago, I probably couldn't have done that. Not the way I can today anyway. It's instant access to that stuff too. Look at the cab. I use Lyft and Uber everywhere. I haven't used a cab in years. It's just the models have changed. Technology, I open up a Lyft app on my phone phone and I can get call a car and there are thousands of cars and it narrows down to the two that are in my area or the one that's in my area and it, and that one shows up and I get in the car and I leave. I don't even have to have cash. But the the image on the far right here is also the digital transformation that's happening today. Whether you've been, whether you <laughs> recognize it or not, it's building technology. It's transforming. The way we used to operate buildings is changed. The way that we access information about our buildings has changed. Just like the ones on the left, it's changing and it's changing fast. So some of the tips that I gave you, those will help you in, in thinking ahead, thinking about how can I use, utilize technology in my buildings to really move forward? Well, where do we go from here? Really think about that. Sit down and ask yourself, what am I doing today? Make a list. And really look into that. Here's some technologies that you can use using now and look technology related stuff you're doing now. If you're still in a plan room and you've got piles and piles of paper, stop it. Stop it. You have to be proactive and move forward. Think about it that way. We want to be proactive. We want to be forward thinking. Think about the legacy. The folks who have been with you forever, they're leaving. They're retiring. How are you going to capture that knowledge before that folks, uh, th those folks' last day? you got to think ahead like that because that's coming. That's coming fast. I typically uh, ask folks, you know, how many of your folks – are set to leave and then you know retire in the next you know five or ten years. Industry stats show it's about forty to fifty percent. That's a lot of knowledge. It's about to walk out that door. What are you doing to capture that? So there's a new approach. It's this. I said it earlier. It's a phone. It's a tablet. Uh, it's mobile. It's not sitting behind a desk or going down into a plan room. My field teams are out in the field all day fixing stuff. They're bouncing between building to building, floor to floor, room to room. They're all over the place. But ask yourself, how many times are my guys and gals running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? Yeah, I mean, it's hours a day. I, a lot of folks don't track that. They don't think about it like that. Remember when I said think differently? That's one of the things you need to think differently about. Think, how many times am I going into that plan room? I just met with a vice president of facilities a couple of weeks ago, and I said, how much time do you think your team is spending? He goes, oh, I don't know. We don't track that. I said, well, a lot of folks don't track that. He goes, but what I will tell you is I spent four hours myself in my plan room digging through plans. I called three or four people to come in and help me, and we still didn't find it. We gave up. I said, how does that make sense? You got to think like that. If that person is spending that amount of time, how much time is the rest of your team spending? Your it's not just the digging through the drawings and flipping through paper. It's, no, it's, I just had to drive clear across town to my plan room, or I had to you know, climb down the stairs and, and go down into the basement. It's a you know, 20 minute walk, whatever. It adds up every day. What that means to me is they're not able to go fix more stuff. They're not able to go do more preventative maintenance tasks. So now I've got deferred maintenance. I've got this. I've got that. I can't. I, I'm just out of time. And we're always charged with doing more with less. There's, there's just a better way. And it's mobile. So I'm going to show you what that could look like here. Give me one second here. I'm going to actually mirror my iPad here. Second here. OK, 
Okay. So what you're seeing here is my iPad, and it's, it's kind of funny. I used a few of these just on my flight uh, last night, but these are just some of the technologies I use all the time. You know, I use I use all these different technologies, but these are just ones that are on my my iPad. And the same thing's on my phone. It, it mirrors this. But imagine imagine being able to find anything I need for my building in a couple of seconds using what everyone has in their pocket today, their phone. You know, I've got a tablet, I've got my phone. You should be able to access it all in just a couple of seconds. It's not rocket science. So let's click on an app here. Here's an example. So say this is a, a campus here, and I've got, uh, this is Valley Medical, but let's click on our buildings one here. And here's campus map. I want to see information about building four. All I do is I click on it. Well, here's an as-built list, as-built map view, shutoffs and equipment. So let's look at this list view at the top. Here's every drawing set, all that paper that you've got in your plan room. It's now right there, by date and what it is. Well, let's click on a plan set. Goes to the index. Get a few sheets linked in the index here. Click on a sheet, it goes to the sheet. Every detail call out, click on a detail, go straight to the detail couple of seconds, I'm at a plan set down to the detail. That fast. Imagine having to climb off that roof and go down to the plan room. Now I've got to climb back up. Oh, crumb, I grabbed the wrong, wrong binder. Now I've got to go back down to the plan room. Oh, it's right there. But then you've also got a better way. So I've got all those plans in that list there, but that doesn't tell me which drawings touch what part of my building. I haven't got a clue. So the normal way or the old way, again, think differently. The old way was I'm going to call Bob because Bob's been with us for 30 years and Bob knows where every drawing in that list, every set of drawings, every project that's in that list, he knows where they touched in the building. Well, now Bob's on vacation. Now what? So now I'm going to call Betty. Betty's been with me for 15 years. She might know. Betty's tied up. No. Click on this as-built map view. Go to your first floor here. Every drawing set that's in that list is mapped out, color-coded, and shows you where it touched in the building year to year. So say I've got something going on in this part of the building. You see here, there's, some, there's a plan set from 1972, one from 1989, but the part that I'm looking at is right over here. So let's click on this 2000. There's the plan set. And every drawing in that set is linked. Click on a drawing, go straight to the drawing. That's how fast technology and how far technology has come in just a short amount of time. But that's where you should be today, too. Let's go back here. So say I've got a, uh, a pipe burst in my building or gas leak or whatever. It doesn't matter. I want to find the shutoff. Click on the shutoff button. First floor. All my shutoffs here. And you can see here, I've got gas, med gas, natural gas, panels, or water. You can search for those. You can turn them on and off. But I want to see the water. So let's click on this water. And you see here, oh, there's a photo there. Wow. I even know how to shut it off now. A couple of seconds, and I just found a shutoff. Now I even have instructions how to shut it off. I don't have to call Bob. I don't have to call Betty. I don't have to call anybody. I'm the newest person on the team, and I have access to that too. So when something goes sideways, I can access that immediately. Well, think about that. I mean, that's a big deal. That water is not going to stop running while you or leaking while you're digging through plan set. No. I pull my phone out of my pocket in a couple of seconds, I just found it. Well, another way is think about equipment. It's not just uh, knowing what type of equipment you've got. It's where is it? Where is that equipment? So think about, you know, there's a lot of different systems that you might use out there to manage different things for equipment, but a lot of them don't map out and show you where the stuff actually is located. I'm the new guy or gal, and I don't know where it is. I mean, I've got a clue. I've been on the job for three months. I don't know where every unit is in the building, let alone I'm managing 20 buildings with my team. I haven't got a clue. Well, let's click on equipment maps. So the first floor of this building, all the equipment can be mapped out too. So think about it, air handlers, chiller, generators, all of this equipment can be mapped out 
And again, you can click on any of those pins there and access that stuff. That's where technology is today. Well, let's go back here. And now let's think about a couple, of, let's look at another way you can find equipment. So I, I, I know what kind of equipment, but I want to search for an air handler. So let's do AHU, hit search. I'm looking for number 19 here. Uh, let's click on that. And there it is. I've even got a ton of photos. All this information. I've got linked files here. This could go to an O&M. This could go to warranties. Again, accessing all of that equipment information in just a couple of clicks. I mean, that's the goal here. But again, I can do this. I'm doing this on my iPad. I can do the same thing on my phone. That's how far technology has come. Well, think about emergencies as well. Say I've got something going sideways on my campus. Let's click on our emergency here. And again, building four. And I want to see any of the emergency information for my building, any of it. I want to see where my fire extinguishers are. I want to see where all my labs are, any of the stuff associated. Where are my evacuation routes? What do I do if something happens? Again, on your phone, on your tablet. This is where we come. It's not just a matter of picking up nine, you know, picking up the phone and dial 911. I can pick up the phone and I can even share information out with a first responder. I can click on this equipment button here, go to the first floor. Here's all the emergency equipment in my building. And I want to see, well, let's hide these and let's go to cameras. I've got something going sideways and it's in the southeast corner of my building. Let's click on that camera in the bottom right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to equipment here, camera. Let's go to useful links. Okay. And this is going to take just a second here. I'm working off my, my hotspot here. But again, this is a live feed of a camera outside of my building. Think about that. I just clicked on a camera icon and I can see a live feed of what the heck's happening outside of my building. That's how far technology's come. You can access any of your building information. It doesn't matter if it's a piece of equipment, it doesn't matter if it's a drawing, it doesn't matter what the heck it is. You can access all of your information for your building in literally just a couple of clicks. It's not, it's not new. This stuff is available to you. You can do this today. Ask yourself, what can I do? What can I do to take that next step in my facility? So, and uh, I'd like to answer some questions. Can you uh, throw them out there? Yes, yes, thank you, David. Thank you uh, for the presentation and, and those tips and the demonstration. We appreciate it. And uh, thank you to our attendees you. for your attention. So we do have some time for Q&A and we will go ahead and uh, pose those to you. And please continue to send in your questions. So um, I'm going to start basically with a, um, with a question at, from the outset to um, you had talked about paper documents as built, et cetera. So we have someone here that is certainly in that situation and I'm sure others on the call are. So what is the best way for us to get our paper documents digitized? So you do have, say you are in that situation. How do you, how do you move toward the, what you've been talking about here? Certainly. Um, I, I can speak to our, our company a little bit, but we scan all the information in for a client. So think about, think about you've got all those plan rooms. It should be really turnkey. So, it, you know, in our case, we pick all the stuff up, we digitize it, we do it all. You don't have to mess with it. Um, make sure that whoever you're doing the process with your, your digitizing process is one company that you don't have multiple outsourced companies, but it's, it's involves scanning the information in OCRing it, meaning reading the information on the, on the plan sets, reading the information in the binders and making that all searchable. So you can find information within the documents. Okay, that's the that's the big deal is being able to find information, not just searching for the uh, searching for the title of the sheet. You need to be able to search for information within the sheet, even the large format. So that's what I recommend as a first process. So if someone already has their some their all their documents or a critical mass of their documents digitized, if they if they've gone through this with uh, one system or another, uh, is there something else they should do to move even further? toward the uh, technology no. advantages out there? Yeah, I mean, whatever technologies you're looking at, you always want to make sure that it is able to ingest that information and make it smart. 
So again, like I was saying earlier, being able to search for that information within that platform, being able to find what the heck you need within that platform. So you want to make sure that whatever system you use organizes that information, puts it into a logical, uh, a logical database that you can access whatever it is from wherever you're at. Because it doesn't make sense to go digital if it still just lives on your share drive. Okay, or it doesn't make sense to go digital and just dump it onto your internal network that, again, remember we were talking about the plan room and the sprinkler head. Well, that sprinkler head's probably in your plan room too, or I'm sorry, in your server room too. So if you don't have it redundantly backed up and so that you can access that information, that's a bigger, bigger problem too. So again, you want to make sure that whatever systems you're going with are able to ingest, whether it's digital or paper, ingest that information and make it intelligent. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to uh, jump on that digital mention that you just did there uh, with a, with another question that that came in. And it's uh, you had mentioned mobile first, and uh, I have yeah. a note of that. It was that that there was tip three: adopt a mobile first. So uh, the question is, you mentioned mobile first. How is that different than getting digital? Is there a difference there? There is. I mean, just going digital is like I used the example just a few minutes ago. If I put it, if I'm digital and I've got it on my on my share drive, can you access it on your phone from your share drive? Are you opening up large format drawings from your network on your on your phone or your tablet? Probably not. Okay, so that that information has to be optimized so that you can. It's still print quality, but you at high resolution but it should be formatted such that you can open it and access it directly from your mobile. So, like I said, it's not a matter of just going digital and then you put it on a, a thumb drive someplace. That's digital. But that doesn't mean you can access it. That doesn't mean it's a tool that you can use. So if I've got it on a thumb drive and I've got 50 people on my team, 50 people aren't having the thumb drive. And <laughs> what are they gonna plug it into in the first place? But in their pockets, their phone, that's digital. That is a mobile right. for Thank you. So right, it's the access, it's the speed of response, it's um every, yeah. so you can get something get things done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. you. Uh so we have another question that's come in and uh this one is how is equipment in the field tied to the digital database? Uh referencing I mm -hmm. suppose the the demo that you just showed. How is that equipment tied to the digital database? Can you talk about the connections there? Yeah. Absolutely. So again, it's it's what I found most often is folks will have different types of asset type uh, software. It, it, some of them do, some of them don't. What a lot of those systems do and don't do, I'll, I'll give you a kind of a cross-reference example here. They say when it's time to go do something, like it's time to go fix something or time to go do a preventative maintenance task or whatever, but they typically don't do a good job of telling you where it is, okay, or even how to do it. So let me define that. I'm the new person. It says I get a work, I get a stack of work orders or I get a, a, a spreadsheet of all, all these different work orders and tasks that I have to do this week. Okay. We've all, we've all seen this where, you know, that list starts out small and then it grows throughout the week. It, it happens or it goes sideways when something, something happens. Well, here's the challenge with that. It tells me I'm supposed to go fix something but it doesn't give me the O&M for it. It doesn't tell me if that thing's under warranty. But more importantly, it also doesn't tell me where it is. Is it on the roof? Is it on the second floor? Is it in the closet? Is it in the electrical room on the third floor behind that, uh, behind the, uh, the kitchen? It, that's the problem with a lot of these systems and a lot of systems out there is that it doesn't necessarily tell you where anything is. It just tells you you've got to go do something. Well, that doesn't help me if I don't know where it is. So I'm spending all that time trying to figure out where it is. Okay, I know I've got to do this stuff, but then I've got to call somebody and figure out where is it, or I've got to go just randomly walk around, or, you know, gosh, I seem to remember I worked on that thing three years ago, so which ceiling tile was that under? I haven't got a clue. Well, remember those pins that I showed in that example, that, uh, that demo, you can identify what ceiling panel it's in. You can identify uh, even put instructions how to shut that thing off, how to main, uh, maintain that, have an O&M tied to that particular button that tells me how do you fix it? What's the uh, manufacturer re uh, recommended service on this thing? How often am I supposed to service this thing? 
all of that information should be tied to it as well. And that's what a lot of those other systems, you know, they, they just don't do a great job of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, that overview. So then uh, we have uh, time for about one last question, and I want to uh, do this one. Uh, it's about kind of the overall um, business case of implementing a, a system like this. You've talked about a lot of benefits, of course, and uh, I hope that the attendees on the call uh, are recognizing some of those. So the, the question is, can you provide some recommendations on how to get uh, a budget approval for um, this or other types of technology that have clear uh, to a degree, you know, of course, clear benefits. So how do, how do you talk to your um, management and, and budget people about this type of uh, technology? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest problem that most folks run into is they don't build enough of a business case. So think you really need to sit down and figure out what am I doing today? Whether And it doesn't matter if you're doing paper, you're doing digital, whatever. Really identify what do I stand today? And then really identify what are the different systems that I'm doing. I, I guarantee you're going to find some redundancy. It, it happens. You're going to find that you're doing multiple things in one spot or in multiple spots. It, it happens. But you got to really focus in on, so on the things that will help you moving forward. So if you could combine multiple things that you're trying to do into one solution, or, or maybe it is two solutions, whatever, really identifying what that is, then build that case, then you're building that case, and you're doing your legwork, and you're doing your homework on really building that case up, and you can go into your boss and say, listen, here's where we're at. I'm using this, this, and this, and I found another solution that will do all three of these, all three. This is my business case. It's more, or it's less, or whatever, based on your pricing, of course, but or their their pricing. But again, at the end of the day, identifying what's going to help you long term, either eliminate or maybe you're consolidating some of the different systems. But again, what they're going to focus in on too is I can get more done. So if you go to the, your boss and you say I can get more stuff done every day, I'm not hiring bodies, I'm not hiring people. I can get more stuff done with the folks that I'm doing or that I've got right now on staff every day if I have this. I can also I can also extend the life of some of my equipment because now because I've got more time, I can now do those preventative maintenance tasks. I can do more of that greasing and oiling and, and all the other filter changes and stuff that are or the different things that I've got to do to maintain my building. I can do more of that, which will help extend the life of that building or of that equipment, I'm sorry. So again, building that case up, work with your vendors, work with your vendor, and, and they should be able to help you build your business case. But again, it's a, it's a community. It's not a one person. It's not all up to you. Pull in IT. Pull in other folks to really get a, a consensus of, listen, this makes sense. We need to do something like this. If you show them some of the things that I just showed up here, including you know, obviously the demo here, that's a big step forward, especially if you're if you're paper based. Thank you, thank you, David, for answering those questions and um, for the presentation today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks very much. My pleasure. And we'd also like to thank our. Arc Facilities for sponsoring the webinar, and of course, thank you to our audience for your attendance today and your participation. I would like to let you know that a recording of the webinar, uh, if you'd like to review, will be available online at the facilityexecutive.com website and our YouTube channel. Uh, it will also be made available at Arc, the Arc Facilities uh, website, and that's www.e-arc.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon.